Hey guys, how's it going? Ghostly Rich here today, and today we are going to be installing a winch. So as you can see, I got given this from a friend, picked it up from him. He was going to use it on his rig, he never ended up doing so. I like the look of it, so we worked something out. As you can see, what came in the package? Well, we got a winch, which doesn't really have a brand or anything on it, so... Whatever, it's an 8,000 pound winch. It almost looks like a Xeon style worn winch, but it is definitely not. And then you have your ferret, which we will put this on afterwards. And then we have a ground wire. The positive is already on the back. That way you can't mix it up. We have a remote in and out. So as long as you hook up your power leads right, that will work properly. So we'll put that there. And then we have for me, there are two bolts which are a little bit bigger. These are for the ferret, and they actually have a nut on them, like so. You'll notice that these ones have square ones. Well, the reason why these ones have square ones is because those actually slide in to a track that's on the back of this. Roll this over and show you right in here. So first thing I'm going to be doing is taking out all this and cleaning it up, and then sliding those little squares into here and lining them up with a screwdriver as best as I can. And how would that be done, you might ask? Well, let me get these squares off, slide them in, and I will show you. So you should have four of these, and like I said, depending on the winch that you have, it will have the same mounting style. You literally just grab these things, and you'll see these little squares. You just put them in, and you slide it all the way in, and if you look, if you slide it all the way in, bam, we now have mounting holes. Now, now that those are slid in, we now have mounting spaces, you look past my light bar, which I might actually have to remove to get this winch in here, but we're going to drop the winch over top of these four holes. After that, once we've done that, we can actually thread those bolts in from the bottom. Now, if you have spring washers and a washer, you're going to be doing just fine. You could just do that. If you want to, you can add either blue or red Loctite to this if you want to make it even more bulletproof for when you're off-roading because the last thing you want are these bolts to loosen off and then your winch go flying off or these bolts to loosen period and then when you start winching something your winch is actually moving on the bumper and torquing or not properly torqued down so let's quickly grab these and like I said first thing we're gonna do is take that winch we're gonna slide it or lift it up there which I'm not gonna do on camera because I'll look like a very old man because this thing will break my back it's like 80 pounds but you're gonna lift that up put it on there and then after we do that, we're going to slowly line these bolts up underneath. So lift it up here first. Once you have your winch up here, you can then, if you have your mud tray still on, you'll have to probably pop it off. With mine, after I removed my old bumper, my old skid guard that was right here didn't work anymore. So it's, that's why it's not here. And you can also see my fog lights are zapped, strapped up here. But either way, if you had yours still on here, uh, see this metal rail, there will be a couple of uh, plugs you'll have to unplug from back here. And I don't mean wire plugs, I mean those little plastic plugs where it's the T in the center. You'll have to pop up the center to get the guard off, which you've already done if you've swapped out your bumper to something that holds a winch. And um, there should be three more right here. So pop out the top three, pop out the two back ones, get that out of the way. Once you do so, you'll see that there's our winch holes up here. So next thing we need to do is line it up up top so that way we can screw our bolts in. So as you can see, mine aren't even lined up at all. I just kind of put them there and now I'm going to line them up. When you do line them up, by moving the winch around up top like so, just moving this around with your hand, careful if you have I don't know, touchy paint up there. This paint I don't care about. If you have paint up here that you do care about, maybe it's body color paint, then it could scratch it. Just a warning. Anyways, once we have these, grab your Loctite if you're gonna use it, squeeze a little out, put it on the threads down here like so. After you line it up, screw that bolt in and then uh, you know that she's not gonna come out. So hand thread all four in, get it lined up first. So once you have those lightly in, pull your winch towards the front of the vehicle. Now you might wonder, why would you do that? Well, if you don't do that the first time that you go off-roading and you winch yourself out of something and the winch gets pulled, 
the winch is going to pull up against the bar anyway. So it's better to tighten them down when you've already cinched it up against the vehicle so that way when you're pulling your vehicle out the winch is already resting on something solid. So now that I know my winch is resting on something solid or is pushed all the way forward, I'm going to go ahead and torque those puppies down, get those spring washers to squish and you're good. You go really tight but just don't go that He-Man style which you might crave or do whatever you feel is right. Once you've tightened those bad boys up, next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you can cut that zap strap right here. You see that winch line right here? We're gonna go ahead and pop that through here. Now, as you can see, not a whole lot of room to do pretty much anything right here. So we're gonna to wanna to disengage the clutch. Tells you right here, lift to disengage. Then we're gonna pull you know, feel that drum come out a little bit. Perfect. And now we can get our ferret on and slip that over top. So if you take your ferret like so and you put your first bolt on with the lock washer and then the washer, throw a little bit of Loctite on the back. You can go to the back end, which you can get in here with your fingers and then lightly put it on and do it on both sides because then we're gonna put a box wrench on the back end and tighten this end with a ratchet. You're gonna need is three quarter and three quarter. The three quarter for this side is to hold on to the head or sorry, the nut. And then you'll have the head on this side which you will tighten with that, which would be your ratchet. Now, if you have any problems getting your ratchet in here because the ferret does stick over quite a bit you might just want to use two box wrenches and this one is a ratcheting box wrench so I might just use my non-ratcheting box wrench and my ratcheting one to do this. As you can see I just put this ribbon on here what I use this for is when you hook on your vehicle to a tree this little red flag you put it across your winch line halfway or more if you can so nobody goes running across your line or depending where you are it basically says hey there's a line here watch out it's your warning sign. So, next thing you're gonna have is a hook like so, with a cotter pin or whatever through it. You're just gonna grab it, slip it out. You'll notice that pin comes out. Pretty easy. Put this through, put your loop right here through there, and then put your cotter pin back through and then s squeeze the two ends out so that way it doesn't come out for when you're winching yourself. Next part is all the electrical. Once you are at this point, look at how beautiful that looks. Let's back up. Looks pretty nice, right? Sweet. So, take a pair of pliers, cut off all these zap straps that they've so kindly provided us. For here, you're gonna want some of your own for when we're doing the wiring. Next thing to do, pop your hood because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be shooting lines from down here to up here. Now I'm going to try and avoid going through the fender well too much because you probably have your fenders in. I don't right now and uh, we already have that skid guard out so let's find a way that way. Another thing that didn't come with this kit but if you can I would suggest you get some wire loom now. You might wonder what the heck is wire loom. Well simply you can look up on Google split loom or what it looks like is this. It's the accordion style cover like this and it's always good to put it across your wire just so it doesn't get caught and scratched and torn open on anything. They give you an extra long ground here so you can go straight to the battery because apparently that's how this winch wants it to go. If not, you could, if yours didn't come with a grounding post and you're looking for one, you could just go right in here. There's, I mean, there's two body grounds right here. You could just loosen it off and put it there. Whatever. I'm just going to go with the flow and go how they wanted it, so that way you have proper instructions how the manufacturer wanted me to do this. So as you can see, I have this piece up here. I will just loosen off that 10 mil and I will put it there in the end. But if we go right here, there's two pipes. I literally, if you look down, you can see my garage floor, that gray area. I literally chucked it down there. Once I chucked the wire down there. Let's go over here and show you. Uh, look, there's the end of the wire. Yay, ta-da. But let's show you more. Up there is where it's coming from. Now you're gonna see that pulley. 
Well, we don't want to go anywhere near that. So if you look, there's two pipes right there that come down to that loom. Very hard to show you, but you'll see my wire there coming down from inside. Let's see if I can get you a better view. Basically, see that pulley right there? Make sure you zap strap this wire away from that pulley. You don't want electrical to meet the pulley because if it pulls it out there, then you don't have a winch anymore or well, any winch power and it might do other things. So you don't want to do that. So whatever you do, zap strap it away from the pulley. Make sure you don't zap strap it to any radiator pipes. And that's basically it. After I get this fully zap strapped and cleaned up, I will show you better because I'll have the red wire to show you. So if your winch is like mine and they've attached the power wire, I use the ground wire to feed it down from the top because it's way easier, always easier to gravity feed something than to try and uh, feed it up. If you don't have a long zap strap, this is the best way. Feed the other wire down, move it around the things you don't want it to be around, and then once you say, okay, that looks good, tie this on, pull this wire up, and then after you pull that wire up, you can just drop the black wire back down. Just went through, and now we've got both wires up here. Now this black wire, I'm gonna attach it to the other side of the opening like so. I'm gonna attach to here. After I do that, I'm gonna start zap strapping these up. If you're a car audio guy like me, you'll notice I have fuses on everything. Now I've read online that with winches, you don't bother fusing them. And the reason why is these things pull such high amperage ratios that you'll end up blowing your fuse. They say simply leave it unfused. The control box takes care of anything. And that's gonna make me really say to you, make sure you loom this wire because if you don't fuse this and it grounds out and shorts against metal between here and there, that would suck. So I'm gonna be very careful with mine and definitely going to, like I said, loom. If you've never used split loom before, this is what it looks like. This is what you do with it. You literally work the edge of the wire over this wire like that. And then you squeeze wire and move it down like so very long tedious and boring to watch so I'm not gonna really show you much but I literally just do this and you're just squeezing the accordion over it and just continuously do that as you move it down once that gets all the way up to there you're good if you only have a certain amount of split loom just do the positive wire the grounding wire which is the black wire is not as important because of the fact that if it does get a little bit worn against a piece of metal, the worst it's gonna do is ground out. So if you've limited on resources at the time of split loom, just do the power wire. If you can though, it's best to do both. If you can actually split loom them separately just in case, that way if for some reason it does get through the split room, loom, it isn't squeezing the two wires together and shorting the two out. As you can see, I've put red here at the split loom. If you wanted to, you could bring the split loom right up to there or put black on there. I did that for safety purpose, so if anyone else is ever working on this vehicle, it's pretty obvious. That is the positive, this is the negative post. If you're coming over here, also on the split loom, all the way up, I've put bands of red tape so that way you know which is the positive. And then the negative is sitting right here. I haven't attached these yet because I wanted to go underneath and show you how I've run it. So now that this is all said and done, I've also zap strapped already. We'll be able to go underneath. I'm gonna go right here. So you can see I came down through the plastic. It's resting on the plastic up there. Comes down, goes under the sway bar. And then you can see part of the chassis or the frame right there. I go under it following the loom and then we go up. Now, you can see there's that pulley up there and I'm far away from that pulley and I go all the way up to the top right beside the air box. There's no zap straps in between there. Literally the last zap strap is right there at the edge of the loom. You can see it right there, yeah. That's the last zap strap. And then I literally go to the top. And the rest is right here up top, keeps it away. 
Now, if you wanted to be really, really careful with it, the other thing you could do on top of the split loom is if you're worried about heat, wrap it with a little bit of uh, muffler tape to help deflect heat. This is completely up to you once again. Once you get to this point, attach your negative and your positive and we can test our winch. I loosen it off, I put the negative on. When it comes to the positive, just be careful. Don't be grounded out against anything when you're working with something positive. Just loosen off the bolt, put it on, put it on by tightening it. And like I said, if you got a Jeep, it's I've already got a whole attachment array for you. Once you've attached those two wires, if nothing's blowing up yet, you're already ahead of the game. Make sure your clutch is in after this if you want to, if you want to test it out. Next, for this one, there's a rubber cover right here. If you have a Schmitty built or you have a Warren or something else, might be something different. Take your XLR style plug, plug it in, and then you want to try and put tension on it. So I'm going to try and put a bit of tension and show you here. But we have in and out. Once that clutch is in, with a little bit of pressure on here, we can press in, and if we press out, you can see it backs out. In. And there we go. And that's all she wrote. That is how you know. Again, for making sure you keep these things up to date, make sure you keep up to it with its maintenance, and try at least I think it's supposed to be once a month. If people do it yearly, you're lucky, but completely take all, all the rope and put it back in. Be very careful when handling this rope, once again, or this braided cable. Over time, it can fray. If it does and you don't have leather style gloves on or those thicker gloves, winch gloves as some people might call them, um, you'll get strands of the braided cable into your hand and that really hurts if you've ever dealt with bike brake line before and had that poke you in the skin it hurts either way i hope this helped you out for installing from this point you can go ahead and clean up your tools what a lot of people do too is there's an attachment you can buy for your license plate where it has two little clips on the side and that'll actually you can fold this in and then smack your license plate on your winch cover I haven't gotten one yet, but that is definitely going to be what I'm going to be getting. Anyways, thanks again for watching the video. Press like if it helped you out and subscribe for more. Make sure if you have this right here, your remote, make sure you keep this somewhere in the vehicle just in case you ever get stranded or you find someone off to the side of the highway and you want to be a nice gent and pull them out. Be careful though and make sure you get them to sign a waiver because you don't want to be held for their insurance claim. Blah, 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 blah. I can rant on forever. Anyways. Thanks again for watching.